new medication for people with multiple sclerosis that has just been approved by the FDA and released for availability uh, for prescription uh, at the beginning of March. Uh, it's called Ampira. The generic name is Dalfampridine, which is a delayed or extended release formulation of Fampridine. This is a potassium channel blocker that works on the central nervous system in people with multiple sclerosis. Um, and we've been testing this for, for better than 10 years here at the university. The medications that we've had available for multiple sclerosis for the past 15 years or so have all been aimed at trying to control the disease process, that is, inflammation in the central nervous system that leads to the multiple scars that are the essence of multiple sclerosis. And those scars, of course, cause deficits, sometimes temporary but sometimes permanent, in people's uh, ability to function neurologically. Among the most common and devastating uh, functional problems that people with multiple sclerosis complain of are, of course, gait problems or walking difficulties. Fortunately, over the past 15 years, we've developed uh, a number of a number of new therapies for people with multiple sclerosis. All of them up until recently have been designed and tested and proven to work in, in impacting on the inflammatory process in the central nervous system so as to hopefully prevent relapses and ultimately slow down the progression of disability uh, as a result of the damage to the myelin and, and axons in the central nervous system. Of course, we're pleased that, that the existing anti-inflammatory drugs and new ones on the horizon are, are effective in stopping relapses and slowing down the progression of the disease to some degree. It is an, an unfortunate reality that MS does leave its permanent scars and does tend to progressively cause more symptoms over time uh, in such a way that um, the symptoms impact on day-to-day -day life and on the quality of life. So an alternative and I would say complementary approach to the, the work that's been done on disease modifying therapies is to look for ways of enhancing the way the nervous system works so that we may be able to improve on the loss of function that, that is caused by, by um, the scars from multiple sclerosis. So an approach that we've been involved with uh, for a number of years is using a potassium channel blocker called Fampridine. Um, this medication does get into the central nervous system and impacts, we believe, by improving the conduction of, of nerve signals where damage has been caused by the MS. And in so doing, uh, we may actually see an enhancement or a restoration of some of the loss function. The thing that we've focused on mostly in the clinical trials based on work that we did in the late 1990s here at the university is improvement of gait. And in particular, one of the things that we've, we've found is that the speed of walking as measured by a 25-foot walk done routinely in our, in our clinical practice but in our research setting as well has been a, has, has been a useful tool. What we found in two well-controlled multi-center clinical trials is that a highly significant number of patients taking the actual drug, Fampridine, at a dose of 10 milligrams twice a day orally showed a consistent improvement in their walking speed. But not only was the walking speed better, what we found was that those people who consistently improved on average improved by 25 percent in their speed and in addition those people could identify that they were on drug and doing better in a number of ways. We found for example that they could walk longer distances, they could climb stairs better, they could be on their feet longer. All of these seem to relate in general to improved, improved walking but in a multitude of ways that the patients themselves could feel not just what we could measure in, in, the, in the research setting. So with the advent of the first treatment that actually enhances function in people who have lost some function in multiple sclerosis, we think this is going to be a lead-in research-wise towards uh, our hope for 
ability to begin restorative and regenerative treatments for the central nervous system so that someday we may be able to regrow myelin, restore damaged axons to, to a better function. And this sets the groundwork in terms of clinical trial methodology that will allow us to test, begin to test those kinds of um, research approaches in the future.